Remember all those confetti cannons from a couple of concerts back? That was from a piece that I wrote called Famicius Fantasticus. Hi, this is Michael Markowski, and I'm always so excited when the Westchester Symphonic Winds play my music, and I absolutely love coming to their concerts in the beautiful Terrytown Music Hall. I just wanted to say thank you to Maestro Abersol for continuing to program my music, and thank you to all the musicians who bring that music to life with so much soul and passion. Congratulations to all of you for 30 years of making such beautiful music together. walk away feeling very restored and this the music we play is very restorative like when we finish a concert I feel like <sighs> family I, I'm born into a small family raised with one sibling and I always thought that I wanted to be part of a big family and I became one all I remember is sitting there saying I need to be in this band oh man the music absolutely the music It's so much, it's so much fun. children are, are hell-bent on their kids playing an instrument when, when, when they're young and a lot of people frankly um, don't continue after high school or, or after a certain period of time. Uh, in my own case I forgot to quit. starting when I was 12 years old um, as a proud audience member and three years later I was uh, playing second elbow and um, was very lucky to have been playing with this caliber of musician as a teenager. And in fact, David and I grew up together on the same street, so we've we known were each other since, since kindergarten. And we played music in elementary school. We had the same teacher. Yeah. And we met Mark in junior high, Albert Leonard. Albert Leonard. Because mm -hmm. the original founding members of this group were from New Rochelle. So we're part of like the, the legacy. The original wind ensemble that Jim Wayne yes. had started in New Rochelle High School, and which was the germ the for this group. And when we got to high school, he insisted that any member of the wind ensemble study privately. And we had to audition. Right, right we had to audition. It's the whole idea of the uh, wind ensemble after Eastman Wind Ensemble. One person on a part. Okay, and uh, that's how it was. Uh, and we rehearsed set up. every day in high school. Yes. Every yeah. day.
the phone rang and it was Marge calling from a board meeting and they were calling to say that there was a new conductor he had taken ill he was not able to conduct their gala 20th concert which was coming up in eight weeks they had no program and no conductor and was I interested and in that moment I knew this was a gold mine I mean this was a gold mine of astronomic proportions and so I got dressed and I, I went to the board meeting and by the end of an hour, hour and a half meeting, we had a program and we were all set to go. And it was my hope immediately, I thought, well, if I, if I do well with this, I hope maybe they'll ask me to stay. So we literally were, it was like a trial thing. We we're just gonna, he was gonna do the concert because he knew the music and he was local and it could just plug right in. And then we would decide after that. He was not on the podium for 15 minutes. The very, that next rehearsal, and people were, aga uh, what, aga uh, what's the word? They were, like, their jaws were like this. And they were, they were staring at him, and they were just drinking him up. And I knew in the, like, in 20 minutes, I'm like, yeah, he's done. That's it. We're, we're good. We don't need a trial. We don't need a conversation. He's our guy. He's our next forever guy. And you, the, the electricity in the band was so palpable. You could just tell everybody was so excited that they had... Like, this is what we've been waiting for, and this is what we needed. going on to the third, that no one in the supporting harmony gives that resolution away. It's only a third clarinet to the horn. Everybody else that is sustaining just don't do anything in your sound to trigger what's happening here. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. I almost like, it's like I hear it happening in other parts where you're not changing notes. I can't even express how, how he has made this group better than it could ever, ever have been. Excuse me. Ever. Ever. So it's diminuendo on the first beat and then crescendo, so we sort of leap into it. We, we got it kind of tonight. I just like to really feel that it's pumped. All right? Can we just do that last section again? Can we go back to 50 one last time? 15 5 -oh, with the eighth pickup. band teacher in Briarcliff, New York. I've been doing that job only for two and a half years. And uh, prior to that, my training was in orchestral playing, originally as a trombonist. I graduated from Juilliard and I played down in Mexico City. So coming into a high school band situation, I had no idea about the repertoire. But fortunately, in 2011, I joined the Westchester Symphonic Winds and through performing with Kurt and the band, I became familiar with some of the greatest uh, band concert literature ever written. One of the most important things uh, that I hope to do with my students is inspire them to play music, but also to get into concert band music and enjoy the genre. And it's an important mission of our band to invite our students and their families to our concerts. And that's a big part of our program in Briarcliff. And, uh, and uh, I tell the band, it's like playing soccer unless you hear a, unless you see a professional team or you go see the Yankees play if you're a baseball player or, or go to the uh, a tennis match with pros you don't really get it but when they get here they really get it and they bring back that excitement to our band group so uh, it's been it's been a great inspiration 
And I've also invited Kurt to come to Briarcliff and do workshops with our kids. And Kurt never fails to surprise the kids. We were playing a piece called Longing by Patrick Burns, and we performed Patrick Burns' music here, and he's guest conducted our band. And uh, we're playing the music, and there's a musical point, and Kurt asks the band, the students, what do you think? Should we play it this way or that way? And they're having a whole discussion. And uh, Kurt says, well, wait a minute. Why don't we ask the composer? He whips out his cell phone, <laughs> dials Patrick Burns, and the kids are like, whoa. <laughs> Dials him up, we put him on the speakerphone and through our PA system, and he has a whole conversation with him about how to play this thing. These composers are such wonderful people, and I, I think it's truly really important for us as conductors, for us as performers, to remember that this music just doesn't spew out of a printer somewhere magically. There's a person behind this, a person with a story, a person with a background person with failures and successes and um, a narrative and hearing that and embracing that narrative and incorporating that into what we're doing I think is one of the most important things that we can do. This isn't just a community band, okay? When I play with this band, I feel like I'm playing with professionals. Um, and it isn't just the fact that we can all play, it's that we have this kind of, this kind of unanimous sense of commitment. <laughs> We're playing much more challenging, interesting music. And the group is a happy, Happy Ensemble. Has it really been 30 years since uh, I and a, maybe two dozen other people came to the Dobbs Ferry band room? We were, yeah, I remember sitting next to, I was sitting behind Astrid and sitting next to Janet, Janet Duncan, and Janet turned to me and said, we're going to be the best of friends and the most uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. It was quite the self-fulfilling prophecy. So here's 30 years down, at least another 30 more to go, in my humble opinion. That I have the chops to last 30 yes. years. Yes. <laughs> We're in a whole new, whole new era now. I just feel very, very lucky. I feel so, so fortunate that my phone rang that night in March of 2008 and that uh, I had this opportunity to start to work with this group and that the group embraced me and has gone on this wild ride with me because uh, it's, it has felt at some times like a roller coaster, but that's what makes it fun.